complex narratives of being taken by alien beings into UFOs on beams of light. The Air Force is trying to cover up with a picture of Venus and the moon. From my own point of view, I'm going to be very disappointed if UFOs turn out to be nothing more than visitors from another planet, because I think there could be something much more interesting. I'm not telling you that. The United States government is telling you that. Welcome back to Disclosure Team. I'm your host, Vinnie Adams. This is a pre-recorded interview with Ryan Robbins, a.k.a. UFO Jesus, a.k.a. Post-Disclosure World. Enjoy. All right, Ryan, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's my pleasure and honor. Thank you, Vin Vinny. No worries. Um, I think initially, you know, uh, I'd love to just know a bit about your background and where you started in this subject that we're also uh, dedicated to researching. Yeah, so, I mean, the UAP issue always intrigued me. I can't give you a precise answer as to when I started looking into this because I honestly don't remember. Um, but I was introduced to it probably pretty young from documentaries, What, which ones I don't know. And I always perceive that we are being lied to by the U.S. government on this issue. And so what escalated my interest in this issue to where I got much more serious about it is the October 11th, 2017 press conference by To The Stars Academy. When I saw um, Steve Justice, number two guy, I think, from Lockheed Martin Skunk Works, longtime um, government employee with high level clearances, how put off scientists, engineer. Then you had the high level CIA uh, guy, Jim Semivan. And then of course you had Luis Elizondo. And I remember keenly when he was on stage and he was behind the podium and he said it was in this position, position being the head of ATIP that I learned that the phenomena is indeed real. At that moment, I knew the world would never go back to the way it was. And I'm, I'm, I'm just going to put it out there. I'm sure that a lot of cynics would have probably told me that I'm naive and, and foolish for thinking that if they would have been there with me at the point the time, right? But I was right because five years later, this is still going on. And I don't think it's going to desist anytime soon. Uh, in fact, I don't think it's ever going to desist. And so it was the To The Stars Academy press conference that lit a fire underneath me and then I think it was about three weeks later that I started uploading regularly and I haven't stopped since. I would have uploaded immediately after, but I was involved in something else where I didn't have the time. So it was about three weeks after that and I've been obsessed ever since simply because, number one, um, I perceive we're not alone in the universe. We're being engaged by non-human intelligence. And number two, this is looking like it's going to be a consensus reality in the not-too-distant future. So I don't know what's more – if there's anything more exciting than that, I don't know what it is. Yeah, completely agree with you there. Um, and I think I came from a similar background, just absorbing so many documentaries on the subject. Um, and for me, that just wasn't enough. I needed to go further and dig deeper. So I, I really resonate with that. And you mentioned in there non-human intelligence. Uh, in, the, in the years where we've heard many different possibilities about what they are or where they may come from, be it extraterrestrial, crypto-terrestrial, interdimensional, and, and many, many more, what sort of sits top of your list currently out of any of those, if you if you had one? Yeah, well, I mean, one of the most fascinating components of the phenomenon or phenomena, to be more accurate, because I don't I'm not I'm not convinced it's all one thing, right? Is its ability to infiltrate our world to be seen on literally a daily basis. And when I say that, I mean unambiguously. Yes, a lot of people see things in the sky and they think they saw a UFO. I'm not talking about that. I think I, 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 from my analysis, every single 24 hour period, there are human beings on this planet who are seeing unambiguous UAP, whether they're flying saucers or cigar shaped vehicles or spheres or triangles or what have you. Now, what's really fascinating is how is this all happening 
while simultaneously our great institutions, our scientists, our journalists are saying that it's all baloney. How is that possible? Some people would say that's happenstance. I don't think so. I think, and though I, I'm, I could be wrong, but I think that's uh, intentional. So whatever this is, is, it's so advanced that it's able to allow its presence to be seen on a regular persistent basis while simultaneously having so much of the world's population deny its existence, which is inherently bizarre. Uh, why is it doing that? Well, I have a theory on that, but maybe we can go into that later. But to answer your question, it seems to me that whatever this is has the capability to ensure that it was never really detected too much if it wanted to be. Like it could cloak as much as it wanted to, I, I presume. I mean, if you look at, for example, Ryan Graves did an interview recently on the Concrete podcast, and he talked about how multiple sensors would pick these things up off the eastern seaboard, and he'd get in proximity to them where you would think you'd be able to perceive them through your eyes. They don't see anything. So it appears they're cloaking themselves, uh, which in the UFO report, they call that um, uh, signal management. But it's stealth, and it's stealth on a very high level where you can't even see these objects. Um, one of my favorite hypotheses, frankly, is that they are aboriginal to the Earth, that they are they developed on the Earth like we did, just maybe uh, maybe under the oceans, or uh, you know, Elizondo has spoken about this that maybe their their existence is on another timeline where we we exist in the present moment, but they're they exist in another component of time where time may be much more uh, wide spectrum than how we experience it, but they're still inherent to this planet. So I, I'm, I'm very impressed with that hypothesis that they're Aboriginal to the earth. But on the other hand, they could be, it could be multiple sources. Some of it could be extraterrestrial. Some of it could be Aboriginal. Some of it could be uh, interdimensional, whatever that means. I mean, I don't really know what that means. You know, but um, but what partly what fascinates me the most is whether it's a single origin or multiple origins. It's amazing that they've all seen seem to have um, determined to keep their manifestation very fine tuned to where people are seeing them. Um, even military is picking them up on a much higher level than the civilian components of of the world, but yet. A smoking gun still never seems to emerge in a public way. How is that possible? Well, of course, the skeptic would tell you that's because there is no smoking gun. And it's all misidentifications. It's all um, LARPing and gullible analysis and people thinking they saw something when they didn't. I don't I don't think that's true at all. I think that's a poor analysis, and I think that the, the future will bear that out. Um, so we're either dealing with one origin, like it's extraterrestrial, or multiple origins, or even if it's extraterrestrial, it could be many different species. But what, what right. one of the realities of this presence that blows my mind is how they're all working together to ensure that a public smoking gun never emerges. How is that even possible? I mean, look at the – if you just just look at all of the um, alleged crashes that have taken place or even not necessarily just a crash because I know like – and I'm skeptical of the Bob Lazar story, but nevertheless, he did say that he seemed to perceive that – that the people that got the, uh, got a hold of these saucers, it was an excavation. So whether it's an excavation we're dealing with or crashes and excavations, how is this man manifesting with it not leaking into the public? And you know, maybe my maybe my tinfoil hat's uh, wrapped around my head too tight, but I'm 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 suspicious that these 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 intelligences are using some sort of mind-blowing artificial intelligence where they're trying to manipulate our psychology they're trying to manipulate our evolution right. because how how is it that thousands of sightings are happening every day potentially and periodically um they're crashing or being discovered and being being studied and yet we still have this dichotomy persisting in the world of most of us believe there's no smoking gun. Our institutions don't, don't even give give credence to to this phenomenon, and yet it's so um, pervasive in our world. 
in our skies, in our oceans, detected by submarines, detected by radars, NORAD, detected by satellites, detected by uh, secret UAP programs that haven't come to light yet in the United States and maybe in other countries, detected coming in and out of the oceans potentially by these secret UAP programs such as that that are like uh, have a lot more evidence and a lot more funding than OSAP or ATIP ever did. How is this happening? It, it seems too over. It seems too far fetched for this to be some kind of anomaly that keeps happening over and over again, where it's just so pervasive, and yet this 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 dichotomy still pers persists. Where where so many people on this planet don't believe it's real, our institutions don't believe it's real. To me, this seems to suggest, and I could be wrong, and, and statistically. You could make a very good argument that I'm probably wrong. But from my subjective mentality and interpretation, this seems to suggest that we are being manipulated on a level that is unfathomable using technology we, we, we can't even wrap our heads around. In the same way that if you took an iPhone and you brought it to, to medieval time, prior to showing them that iPhone, they may not even be able to wrap their head around that technology, right? So something seems to be going on to where we're being manipulated. And in my alien AI hypothesis, I hypothesize playfully that they wanted governments to cover it up. So if you wanted governments to cover it up, what would be one of the best methods to do that? In my opinion, um, allowing them to attain actual technologies from these other intelligence would be because the second the American government or other go governments get it, Knowing their capabilities, now they see it through the lens of military uh, capabilities, and so they they would be, especially during the Cold War, which is when, which is when um, the Roswell event that allegedly happened took place. I, I just feel like governments were baited into into getting paranoid and covering this up, and maybe if you want to take a very optimistic perspective, maybe they are helping us, because what's going to happen when we get disclosure? What if what if they've been um, sort of manipulating us and creating this incredible fine tuning so that decades would pass where governments would lie to their populace, but ultimately culminating in disclosure? So what would that uh, f that 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 finality encompass? That that climax, if you will. Well, for one, we'd all start questioning our own governments. Do they have too much power? We'd start questioning their policies. We would start questioning everything they've done because if they've been lying to us about this, what else have they been lying to us potentially? And should we start being more skeptical about the decisions they make, whether it comes to war or otherwise? And then you would also have a, a humbling on a, a, a civilization level because now we're going to be looking at our great institutions, our great scientists and scientific community and be like, what were you doing for the past 70 years? So now all of a sudden we have all these kooks and you, I'll be one of them. I'm a kook, right? So, so be it that we're right about this, about the greatest discovery in human history, but the people that should have been most obsessed with it and doing the actual work to learn what's going on, they ignored it. So it's just like this big explosion of humility that is going to encompass the entire earth on so many different levels. And it may be, it may be that which leads to the human species taking a different turn, if you will, that leads to more peace, more humility, uh, more civility, uh, the qualities that are conducive to more cooperation, less violence, less pettiness, um, and, and less of the problems that we, we that our, our psychology is so prone to. So, <clears throat> which this all falls under the umbrella of my alien AI hypothesis, which I, so, so I'm just very suspicious that some, because I, I came up with an axiom a while back. I don't remember it, it exactly. It's, it's, uh, I shared it in a video, but basically it goes like this. The more advanced a, a, a species becomes or a civilization becomes, the less random everything they do and the more, the more, preemptive everything they do is. So if you have at your disposal incredible artificial intelligence, why would you not use it? If if our species was visiting other worlds and studying them, and we knew from experience that 
that civilizations can go south real quick with, with their technological development. Would we not be like, okay, we want to steer this civilization in a positive direction. So let's go to our little artificial intelligence machine and cr maybe, maybe create some kind of um, dichotomy like we're experiencing now, where we make it so that, that it's very obvious to much of the population that we exist, but we, we bait governments into lying about it. And we, we, we present ourselves in a way in which the, the great institutions may, may deny its reality. So, so, so it's plausible that what we're dealing with has dealt with civilizations for millions of years or hundreds of thousands of years. They've seen us, right? They've seen us, not us specifically, but they've seen our species in terms of where we are in our development, many, many iterations on other planets. So they may have figured out over a long span of time what it takes to subtly manipulate and steer a civilization in a direction for which they are going to be less um, harmful to to the to themselves and to their planet, and will and so getting them to develop. So I kind of feel like maybe what we're dealing with is using this kind of artificial intelligence to game plan us on a level that we can't even comprehend. And is trying to steer us in a direction to where we will change the course we're on, which is all the more important when you when you have much greater technology. So this may in some to some extent culminate with disclosure, and that this, the disclosure will will be a turning point for human psychology, human culture, human philosophy, the government human relationship, and it ultimately theoretically could save our save us from ourselves now this is a very optimistic model that that i've come to and it could be completely wrong it might be a lot i mean th this may be completely wrong but it's something i like to play with and something i like to contemplate no i appreciate that and i'm quite an optimistic person myself naturally so uh, i relate to that um when it comes to crash retrievals we've heard over the years many times that People talk about reverse engineering programs that mastered anti-gravity technology back in the 50s. But then on the other side of things, we hear that the technology is brought out every 10 years. They, they have a go at trying to reverse engineer it and then they can't. So they put it back. And when I think about it, I'm more likely to kind of go with the latter. Um, I'd just be interested to see what you think of that. Yeah, if I heard you correctly, I, I think I go with the latter, too. I mean, th this is the way I see it. At the end of the day, you're dealing with corporations, yeah. whether it's Lockheed or Boeing, right? Just like Walmart or Amazon, right? Now, I, I, I'm not trying to belittle them. They do good work for national security. Uh, there's a lot of criticisms to be made toward them as well. Um, nothing in life is, is ge generally black and white. Yeah. But if you have a technology that, um, well, it can go both ways. Because now that I'm thinking about when I, when I spoke to... Uh, Omega point. It can go both ways. There's a, there's a <laughs> lot of interesting arguments there, but, um, so I mean, it's, it's all speculation, but I, sure. I tend to think that, um, I tend to think that it would have made it into industry by now. If, um, if they would have cracked gravity, it would have made it into industry somehow. Like, you know, you could argue that, well, they don't want to go there because they're making more money by persistently, creating slightly better aircraft as an example. Now we have the F-16. Now we have the F-22. Now we have the F-35. Now we have, we had the, we had the, um, whatever was the, the previous mob, model of the stealth bomber. Now we have the B-2 Raider. You could, you could go down that route, but I, I tend to think that, um, and they may be doing something like that, right? They may purposely not try to upgrade as quickly as they can, just like with the iPhone. iPhones keep coming out, they may have like an iPhone that's five years ahead of now. They don't want to come out with that. They want to keep coming up with new inter iterations before that so they can make as much money. That still may be part of the equation. But I tend to think that if they truly cracked it, uh, it would have made its way in the industry some way or somehow. Um, like, I'll just give you an example. Let's say, you know, Vladimir Putin cracked um, anti-gravity. Does anyone believe for even a split second that he would sit on that and not use it for his, his whatever he wants to achieve or China? Well, you know, I'm not sure the United States is so different in that respect. Uh, I certainly, you know, I don't, I, I, we're, we, we have greater freedoms and I think we are, we have a better, um, the United States and many, many Western and free countries have, have a better governmental system. But yet, if you have something on that level, do you really not use it 
when you're going to war, I'm a little skeptical of that I think you use whatever you got, right? If it's if it's fully functioning and fully capable, you don't just you don't just not use it. You use it. You you definitely use it. Um, and that's kind of where I come from on that. So, but I do think they have. I think it's very plausible they've recovered craft, but I think it's pr more likely that it's a situation where it's just so advanced that they've not been able to replicate it in a in a in a sufficient way to actually start using it in any any um meaningful way yeah and now recently we obviously got the much delayed uap report 2022 but um, obviously that was due to release on october 31st and around that time we started seeing these articles we had the uh julian barnes the holman jenkins that were really kind of seemed to be going against the UAP subject and that's probably not the right phrase to use but it seems that they were pre preempting something to try and I don't know muddy the waters or whatever and I'd like to hear your views on, on, on what was going on there. I think I recall George Knapp saying that one of the reasons they might have done this is is to discourage other news outlets from covering it right by preempting it and saying well no it's just gonna all be gonna be a nothing burger because if you if you look at the New York Times, for example, when the December 16th, 2017 New York Times article that kind of started this whole thing, you could argue, that gave permission to all these other publications, whether it was the Washington Post uh, or others. I mean, it, every every other publication followed to, to follow it, right? So it, it could be that some people in the Pentagon were like trying to trying to water it all down so that other publications would kind of back off uh, as, as a form of, of subtle pushback, if you will. Yeah. I think that might've been going on. Um, there are, as I, as I understand it, people in the Pentagon who really do not want this to come out and they're very motivated. Uh, and so while I think it's ultimately a futile effort, um, well, I think it's ultimately a futile effort. I um, I think there might be something like that going on because it, if you look at, I mean, it, as far as like Julian Barnes' article in New York Times, it seems like he was off the mark, right? I mean, it, he was talking about like the idea, if I re recollect correctly, that maybe the gimbal or the Fleur one was like an optical illusion, as if the as if hinting to to it was going to get debunked on some level. Well. Lo and behold, we get the uh, we finally do get the the UFO report. It, they weren't debunked at all, not even remotely. Um, and 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 while I I was disappointed with the most recent UFO report, this the the reality still remains that it was maintaining this enigma. It was not casting it in a light where we could all go home and kind of go like that. It was casting it in a light that, bruh, there's still stuff out there that's appears to have unusual flight characteristics that we don't understand. So while disappointing, um, it definitely is keeping this momentum going forward. Uh, so that's what I would basically have to say about that. Yeah. And it seems that the gimbal, like you mentioned there, that the, it's still very much an ongoing conversation from, from both sides, from people that genuinely do believe that it's something anomalous to people that are almost certain in their beliefs that it's uh, quite prosaic. And, you mentioned the the Ryan Graves interview on Concrete, and I believe in that interview he also states that there is a third video uh, showing more strange wobbling effects of this of this gimbal. I mean, is that would that fall under your smoking gun? Let's say uh, maybe not of the whole of disclosure, but yeah, what would you think would happen if that came out in the conversation? To be perfectly frank, I think it's a smoking gun, which uh, which bothers me. I okay. think the Fleur One's a smoking gun too. And what do I mean by that? What we've been given, not a smoking gun. But do I think that the most powerful uh, Navy in the entire world with satellite systems and all kinds of sensors, some classified, some not, in other words, some we don't even know about, do I think they've at at attained enough um, data to rule out foreign governments? Yes. Yes, I do. Um I, I don't know that, I, I, I'm, but it's it's my perception. And in that 
interview you just cited, like Ryan Graves said himself, there's so much more data out there. Even even just from like I think it was just from the the radar on the F-18, you know, let alone what other big uh, sensor collecting mechanisms the United States government has. So the, 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 we're being lied to. You know, let's just let's just call it what it is. I think Stephen Bassett likes to call it like we need to be lied to to get out of a lie. It's kind of what he says. <laughs> Because if if they do know we're not alone, and and they have so much sensor data to to objectively ascertain that this is just not coming from China or Russia, well, the way they're presenting the material in the UFO reports, just as an example, is is not in alignment with the level of certainty that they have that we are not dealing with adversaries. Um, are they are they? going too far with the idea that, well, you know, it could be a one in a hundred thousand chance that this is China and Russia. So based upon that, we're just going to say appear, 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 appears to be flying unusually, appears to do this, appears to do that, because there's always that infinitesimal probability that China came up with uh, leapfrogging technology, even though their budget's way less than the United States, even though we're spying on them constantly, but it just went under the radar, everybody. Nobody knew about this project, right? Nobody knew about their uh, Area 51 equivalent producing this level of technology. Are they doing that? I don't know. Uh, they're, 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 being, they're being insincere in some level, in my opinion. But look, the new legislation has whistleblower protections. And from what I've heard from Jeremy Corbell, George Knapp, and others, Tom, uh, not Tom Rogan, but just others, a lot of people, because I know people are going to be like, oh, George Knapp and Jeremy Corbell don't count. Well, there's a lot of other people saying the same thing, is that Congress has already been um, informed about at least one legacy UAP program through official channels. So, I mean, th this thing, in my opinion, it's inevitably going to come out. Um, we're we're going to discover that there's legacy programs, in my opinion. And that they're funded a lot of money and they know a lot more about this phenomena. Uh, and I'm sure there's people in the Pentagon that know that these legacy programs exist. I know that if you read um, Bernard Hache's article, astronomer Bernard Hache, uh, he said that, assuming he has good sources, and that's the impression I get, he said that ATIP went looking for a crash retrieval program and if discovered it through official channels but was not given access to it uh, because they were not uh, they didn't have the clearance to do so. So these these legacy these alleged legacy programs because I'm not saying I know they exist. Do I believe right. they exist? Absolutely. I think what people need to understand is is that there's never been this level of pressure um, on the intelligence community uh, or the Pentagon to come clean on what they know about this topic. So when people say like, well, they've gotten away with their 70 years and get away with another 70 years, I would say, wait a minute. They've gotten away with it for 70 years because there was almost no pressure. That has changed over the last five years. And um, I mean, it's quite plausible that the reason that the Congress is so insanely aggressive on this is because they already know. They've already been told by whistleblowers behind the scenes. And that gave them the impetus to create this legislation. Some people want to argue, oh, it's just a mind virus, brother. It's just a bunch of UFO fans in the government that, inf that influence Congress to do this. Well, okay, fine. If you think that's smart, hey, man, more power to you, right? As I wrote in one of my Medium articles, uh, I don't remember the title, but I basically said, look, it is what it is. We don't, we don't need to, to be obnoxious with each other. We can be like, just state your position. Let's see what happens because I'm of, I'm of, I'm of the persuasion that – if in the next two, three, four years, nothing comes about this, then skeptics will have a much better argument. But let's wait until that happens because I feel like with the pressure now, it has to come out. It just There's just too much pressure. So if there's a there there in terms of like legacy UFO programs, that will come out. Now, granted, I think people are saying like, well, Congress gets the final say on whether or not they reveal to the public that there's legacy programs. Well, you know, Chris Mellon was speaking with um, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand because it was in his article, and I think it was his, his article, and it was reported that 
she was asked um, if they discovered that there was a, a retrieval of a, of, a, of a UAP, would you think the American people should, should know? And she's like, of course they should. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah, absolutely. Now, recently we uh, saw the latest uh, release from Jeremy Corbell, the, the Mosul Sphere, on his new sh- uh, podcast, Weaponized, with George Knapp. Uh, and you were one of the first to put out a really good, thorough video on that, which, uh, you know, we love to see. But for anybody that maybe didn't happen to see that video, I'd love to just hear your thoughts on the way it came out, the actual, what it sort of said to you and what it represented. Yeah, so it was from a spy plane <clears throat> over Mosul, Mosul Iraq. <clears throat> and from what I understand, the spy plane wasn't looking for an orb or anything like that. It was just doing what it does, collecting intelligence. And for four seconds, this spherical object comes into the viewfinder of the of the spy plane. And, and I think it... I don't know if it was four seconds, but I think that the actual footage is only a second or something like that. Yeah. I don't know where I'm getting four seconds, but it's a four second clip that it was oh, taken from clip. Right. So the, the sphere seconds. is one second. All right. Gotcha. The seconds before and after. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. So <clears throat> I think it's very intriguing. According to Jeremy Corbell, as far as I understand, the, um, the people in charge of studying it consider it unresolved officially within the United States government. So that's interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, it could be a balloon, but it also could be a UAP. And one of the reasons I say that is simply because if you, if you've read some of Josh Boswell's work, um, he talked about him and Christopher Sharp were the first, I think, publication outside of Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp to do an article on the Mosul orb. But even prior to that, um, Josh Boswell did an article, I think, in the Daily Mail, yeah. in which he talked about the upcoming UFO report. And he talked about how spheres, orbs, are being recorded for various periods of time. I think one citation was sometimes it's like 10 minutes. And they and not only are they being recorded, but they're being recorded doing bizarre flight maneuvers that, that should not be possible. And spheres, by the way, where's the propulsion system going to be? There's no wings. Um, it should not be able to maneuver in a sophisticated way. So if they're getting all this footage over and over again of spheres maneuvering in sophisticated ways, then it's quite plausible that they know that this is not from an adversary, just like the Tic Tac, just like the gimbal. Uh, so so this only gets to the heart of how deep the cover-up, if you want to call it that, I know that Stephen Bassett's real big on calling it a UFO uh, truth embargo. But this only gets to how deep this might go. I mean, all of this that we're seeing right now, um, disturbingly, may be only the tip of the iceberg. And we're really going to have to do a real reckoning when disclosure comes, in my opinion, because the skeptical mantras that have been going on for decades now, uh, Finn Hanley, and shout out to Finn Hanley, he knows them all by heart. He's a he's an authority on, on skeptical mantras. But one of them is it's there. It's the distances are too great, so the UFOs are not alien, or um, governments are not good at keeping secrets, y'all. If they knew there was a you you uh, a, non, a non-human intelligence pervading our world, we would know about it. There'd be leaks, and on and on and go those mantra, 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 mantra. Well, what happens when all those mantras are wrong? All of them. Oh, we got to do a reckoning. You know what I'm saying? We got to humble ourselves and stop stop giving people so much credibility because it's just their like it's just like their opinion man you know what i'm saying so um yeah we got to do a reckoning because it's it's disturbing how uh how much footage do they have how much sensor data do they i mean it, when you consider the potential layers of evidence they have over many decades it might be so much that if we were to know we would just um get really depressed uh, because it just makes the cover up that much worse. Like, it's not like it's not my perception. And I could be wrong. Of course, is that it's not like they're suspicious. We're not alone or they're getting hints. We're not alone. I think it's a lot worse than that. I think that, um, they have side. Well, look, John Ratcliffe, former, uh, DNI director of national intelligence explicitly said there's satellite imagery. He explicitly said that, uh, these things will be detected going beyond the sound barrier with no sonic boom. He explicitly said that 
uh, that, that we can't replicate these maneuvers. Barack Obama, former eight-year term president, said there's footage and records of stuff doing things we can't easily understand. Um, we have Luis Elizondo now, right? There's just this, this iteration of after iteration over decades of people coming out saying it's real. On top of that, we have witness testimony from gazillions of people over decades and decades with commonalities in their testimony. Oh, it's a flying saucer, right? Flying saucer is a very common shape. Why? Maybe because it's real. You know what I'm saying? Maybe because it's real. Maybe that's why there's so many patterns, y'all. Um, it's all disturbing. It is, it is extremely disturbing that this was able to persist. Um, and you know, shout out to um Kick Plenty Twitter account. Uh, Kikala, I think. I always mispronounce his name. Great guy, very smart. He coined a phrase, and uh, he deserves full credit for that phrase. I don't think anyone's ever come up with that phrase before. So shout out to Kikula, Kick, Plen Kick, uh, Kick Plenty on uh, on Twitter. He, he, he coined the phrase second disclosure. We all know what the first disclosure is. The first disclosure is obviously smoking gun evidence emerging, changing the consensus on this presence. The second disclosure is realizing how dumb we all are, how many blind spots we all got. You know, we got our Wi-Fi, right? We got our Starbucks. You know, we got our iPhones. We got our we got our 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 watches that are like iPhones on our wrists. But then we have an alien presence, in my perception, that's been here for decades. It's pretty obvious that that's here. We've had people coming out of the government for decades. We have FOIA documents that have been uh, attained, giving you a glimpse of how people on the inside view this this issue versus how they the impression they give on the outside, right? Which uh, there's a there's a, a a vast difference between those two, um, and we've had military pilots and and uh, citizenry pilots coming out for for decades talking about weird things they've seen. Um, we have patterns even when it comes to people who claim they've gotten abducted, right? Seeing the same sort of um, creatures and the same kind of missing time experiences, and um, there's even very subtle commonalities that too. I think uh, Finn once mentioned to me how um, sometimes these creatures will be seen like hovering above the ground, right? Counterintuitive stuff that's getting repeated over and over again from disparate sources. Um, and then you have, you know, people having poltergeist experiences after seeing UAP and you, this, this happens over and over again. We, we're just going to have to have, you know, and, and I want to make this very clear. While I do think that I had the, the, luck, if you want to call it, to to see what's going on to some extent, that doesn't mean I'm better than anybody else. That's not the point of the second disclosure. The point of the second disclosure is to acknowledge that we all have blind spots, whether it's philosophical or moral or even maybe religious, whatever. We all have blind spots. Maybe I'm right about UAP and wrong about other things. And that's the second disclosure. When we come together, 8 billion people and being like, you know, maybe we are just a bunch of talking monkeys. Um, <laughs> This phenomenon has been here forever. Governments have done campaigns to lead us astray, and we fell for it. And we didn't listen to all these witnesses because of skeptical mantras that don't necessarily make as much sense as they'd like to believe. I mean, it, yeah, there's there's no smoking gun evidence, but you know what? I got news for you, son. Our civilization 10,000 years from now could go to another civilization on our level right now and probably have the technology to ensure that no smoking gun is captured in the public domain. I don't know where artificial intelligence is going to be 10,000 years from now. Who knows mm. what's what, what that will be capable of then. So yeah, we, you know, so it comes down to the second disclosure. That's, that's part of, you know, I, I think that when we do get disclosure, it's not just going to be a scientific discovery. It's going to be a sociological discovery. It's going to be a psychological discovery. It's going to be a spiritual discovery. How did the human mind become deceived by something that was at the very minimum, there was enough evidence there to take it to, to be curious about it, or even just suspicious that something's going on. Where was that curiosity? Where was that suspiciousness from the scientific community? Why did they not look through the telescope? Second disclosure, baby all day long. But what about the general public? You know, they, I mean, you still see a lot of them, just no interest whatsoever. If we do get disclosure in any form, first disclosure, second disclosure, when they finally come to the subject, how do we 
how do we deal with them? What do how do we ease them into it? Well, look, um, if I was to be consulted by <laughs> the U.S. government, this you know those dealing with the UAP issue, this is what I would tell them. I say, I say, look, first of all, so I would say, look, look, um, this is coming out, right? You know it's coming out. I know it's coming out. When Ryan Graves and his squadron and other squadrons off the seaboard upgraded from the AP, AP maybe 73, 73 to 79, right? That's it. Yep. So when that happened, now they're, they're seeing all kinds of weird stuff out there. Now I grant you, uh, the 73 and 79 is probably classified and, and you can't get that. You cannot currently get that level of detectability technology from the civilian world. But there are still radars that you can buy. And eventually, we will have the 73, 79 civilian version. So what happens when scientists go out in their boats with these radar systems and tweaked, tweaked to specifically look for UAP? And they're like, oh, these things are all over the place. Maybe, maybe they are uh, aboriginal to the earth, but they want to avoid humanity. Whatever. People are going to connect the dots and be like, y'all knew about this. So it's coming out whether we want it to come out or whether we don't. So if I was to consult with the American government, I would say, look, do you want the you, do you want the public to have mercy? Do you want them to have compassion? Do you want them to be understanding? Do you want that to be at the highest level possible? Or do you want people to be as angry as possible? If you want them to be as angry as possible and you want to disrupt um, civilization as much as you humanly can muster, baby, then here's what you got to do. Keep putting it off. Keep stonewalling. Uh, keep... Engaging in subterfuge, uh, uh, keep manipulating the public's perception of this, keep watering it down, keep obfuscating, right? And then maybe in 15 years, all shit will break loose and every human being will find a pitchfork and go after you and anger will emerge like a, like a volcano erupting and, and this whole earth being covered by ashes and fire and brimstone and lightning, baby. We're angry, man. When Congress came to you and they asked you for the truth, you didn't give it to them. You had the golden opportunity. You you literally tried to cover this up until the absolute last minute. What's going to happen? People are going to be pissed off. So you want to mitigate that, right? So my, my, my recommendation to the government is just Let's do this, baby. Tell the world we're not alone. Let's do this. Give us a piece of smoke and gun evidence. Allow the scientific community to move on with it. Our models of our world are wrong. And they are so wrong that it's it's mind-bogglingly wrong. We'll have to re-examine everything we know about our Earth and our universe. It is going to be the greatest paradigm shift in human history. Let's get it on. Um, but I would not, I I'm not, I'm not. I don't want people to be, I, I, I just want the truth. Um, I'm not here to create anger towards any government or any UFO program. Um, as long as they continue in the right direction. Now they keep stonewalling and lying and leading people astray. I'm going to feel like it's getting more and more justified for them to be pissed off. But if they take this golden opportunity and do the right thing and show the, and apologize and I think they should apologize. Although I, I really doubt they will. But I, it's, <laughs> I saw a clip very recently with Richard Dolan where he's like, you know, you kind of have to apologize, right? You, you lied to us about something of this magnitude. You kind of have to apologize. I think they should apologize. They should show some degree of vulnerability because when you do that, that's when people feel merciful. When yeah. you try to water down the severity of the situation, that's when people get pissed off. Um, and I don't want people to get pissed off, right? I, I don't want people to get angry. I want people to... To, to be very accommodating. So every time the government gets us, gives us something, pat them on the back and be grateful for it while, while pressuring them simultaneously. But I'm not, like, I would never promote, like, I'm not, let me put it this way. I'm not trying to throw the government under the bus. I just want sure. them to do the right thing. Yeah. And when they do the right thing, do I think we, we should uh, throw them under the bus? I, not necessarily. I think we should just uh, try to try to have as much mercy as we can, frankly, and move forward and not get caught up in anger and resentment because that's not going to help us. Now we have work to do. And that work is figuring out where the hell are these things coming from? Who's behind the wheel? What is their uh, what is their intention? And and that kind of and how does their technology work? And how can we 
figure out their technology to improve uh, the, the human condition on this planet and on and on it goes. That's what we got. We need to focus on when disclosure dawns, not getting angry at the government, but hopefully they do it sooner than later because the longer, the longer they uh, delay with this, the more difficult it is for people, pe the more difficult difficulty people are going to have at giving them mercy, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. And now with the UAP report being quite disappointing for most people who are sort of following this subject or, or researching, and then you add in that the whistleblowers the, uh, meeting with Congress behind closed doors, it seems that a lot of this is still being kept away from the public eye. Do you think that we should be seeing or possibly are even likely to see more public congressional hearings? And if you were to put yourself in the, 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 the seat of a congressman, who would you subpoena to appear uh, and, you know, to be asked the questions? Yeah, I would subpoena Luis Elizondo. I, I would subpoena David Fravor. I would subpoena uh, the pilots that um, captured the, the gimbal footage. Um, I mean, that's just for starters. I would subpoena some of the witnesses from nuclear nuclear uh, flyovers and tampering over installations from UAP. Uh, that's that's just for starters. Uh, and yeah, and, and I, I I'm hopeful that because like I'm hopeful that we'll get more um, evidence released too because I think that needs to happen. Like. Give us the full gimbal video, for example. Give us the full FLIR 1 video or higher resolution. Like the, the part of the problem is you can still string the public along while giving them evidence. And a, and a manifestation of that would be the FLIR 1 video, just as an example. Yeah. Some some would tell me I'm wrong. Some would tell me everyone's misremembering. Well, you know what? Have fun with that. We can agree to disagree. I do think there is a high probability that there was a higher resolution. Uh, FLIR 1 video because it wasn't just David Fravor who recollects seeing appendages under under the object. It was other people I, that saw the original. I think yeah. Alex Dietrich also has mentioned the appendages. Now, why is that important? It's important because with what they've given us now, it, it makes it too easy for skeptics to come up with rebuttals in a, in a manner that, that draws um, question of what we're looking at. And, and, and by the way, I would support that, right? They should, because it's not smoking gun evidence, but if you give us higher fidelity, uh, videos, like higher, higher quality videos, then, then we can start moving forward because even the skeptics will be like, Oh my, that's uh, that's much more challenging than the first couple videos they gave us. Well, maybe there is something to it. Well, that's the conversation we need as a yeah. population. <laughs> if it's out there for God's sakes, what are you doing? Give us the good stuff so we can progress the conversation. Don't give us subpar footage so that we can, you know, debate it. And, I, and this brings me into something else. Gary Nolan was interviewed on the Merge podcast with uh, Ryan Graves. And he made an amazing point. He said, wait a minute. There's a, there, by, by keeping this secret, there's, it, so the, the, the military and the intelligence community likes to harp on, well, we need to keep this secret because it could be upsetting for our institutions, religions, and, and the public and so forth. But what about all the witnesses who now are thinking they're going crazy or they're, or, or they're unstable or they're hallucinating and they're questioning themselves and further sociologically society is telling them that they're crazy. What does that do to their self-esteem? What does that do to their mental health on various levels? Like, Okay, we, we've, we've had enough of, of, of you being fearful of how society would respond. Now we need to focus on what's happening to people that are seeing these things and being told they're crazy. Like That's also a risk factor. That can't be good. That's not, that's not good for them. And it's, it's not good for our scientific community because our scientific community is operating under assumptions that are utterly false. Mm. I mean, that's, that's detrimental to say the least for having a grasp of reality. So you've, you're literally holding something back that is facilitating our scientific understanding of the universe to be flawed. That's not, that cannot go on much longer. That's not good for humanity. I don't see any mental gymnastics that, uh, that, that, that can justify that, particularly when it's obvious that this is going to come out sooner or later anyways. So just make it sooner rather than later. 
Yeah. Now, when this this show actually goes out to to YouTube and everything, I think by then we may have had some more testimony f- through Jeremy Corbell from a witness from the 2019, let's say, drone swarms. I don't know how else to phrase it right now from uh, off the West Coast. Now, there's there's a lot of controversy surrounding them, like their low information zone kind of incidents. Um, what are your thoughts on that? And are you looking forward to hearing from more more uh, whistleblowers or servicemen that were that were there? Yeah, well, you know, I know I think Tom Ro- the journalist Tom Rogan, I think of the Washington Examiner, if I'm not mistaken, he has said that like he's convinced that some of this stuff is non-human intelligence, and he will he's li- he's said, if I recall correctly, that he would stake his entire reputation on that. But he says with the 2019 events, he's not so sure, right? It could, it could go either way. It could be Chinese or it could be something weird. Yeah. And I assume that he has better connections than I do for sure. So I find that interesting. But what I will say is um, I, I still think the 2019 events with the drone sw- swarm still represent a, a, a tremendous mystery mm. because the government won't even say where they're coming from. Now, with the with the... I think they were explicit that they don't know where they're coming from. So how is it that there are potentially up to a hundred drones? I mean, I I know this is what Corbell focuses on. Maybe it happened over weeks, but he focuses on a three day span where he claims there was at least a hundred drones swarming 10 different warships over a hundred mile radius, I think over three days. And yet with all of the censored, um, data collecting mechanisms that these these warships have, they still don't know where they're launched from. They don't know who the controllers are, and they don't know where they're going after they swarm the ships. Um, so, so we need to learn more about it because well, let's say it's not non-human intelligence. Who has these capabilities? How How is it that a country like China or Russia has the capability to swarm warships spy on them and not one of them gets shot down not one of them gets shot down so what kind of breakthroughs have they made to be able to do that without the united states government having even a whisper or a hint of where it's coming from when it comes to the ones that are unresolved obviously the ones that are resolved they're different but the ones that have, could, are still unresolved to this point i think it is possible that some of this stuff may be very anomalous and not as simplistic as coming from China or Russia. Um, and by the way, why would that not make sense? When, as an example, I remember reading the New York Times article, I think it came out in May of 2019, that broke the story about Ryan Graves and Danny Coyne and various squadrons off the eastern seaboard from the summer of, I think, 2014 to March of 2015 or something like that. They were seeing these things almost every day. So could that be related to the swarms when it comes to those warships off the West Coast? It could be. Uh, I mean, at the, at the end of the day, we're just not alone, right? And so when you have this new um, paradigm or this, this, new, this new model of reality, then it's not far-fetched anymore that something that a warship encounters could be coming from a non-human intelligence, which is one of the reasons we really need disclosure, right? So that the waters are not muddied any longer. It's not... It's not it's Chinese and Russian, or it's a misidentification. Maybe it's Chinese or Russian, or it's part of that this presence that permeates our our biosphere. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, we all want disclosure, but it, until we get there, it's these small mysteries that we've discussed today that, that keep me going personally, and I'm sure that goes for a lot of other people. Ryan, thank you so much for joining me. I, I really appreciate it. Before you go, please tell everyone where they can find you. Hey, Vinny, this is this is a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. I think this was one of my better performances, so uh, thank you for that. Um, <laughs> you can find me at Post Disclosure World on YouTube. And on Twitter, you can find me at, at Post Disclosure. And um, I'm persistently uploading videos covering uh, UFO news and, and stuff like that. So uh, thank you so much, Vinny. It was a, a really good time. My pleasure. Thank you again. And thank you to everyone for watching. I really appreciate it. Hit the like button, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Take care.